Hey, what's up and welcome to Diddy Deep Dive. This is the live stream where we bring on an artist and dive deep into their ditties. Those are their songs in case you're wondering what we do on this show. Hey, we are brought to you every Saturday by the Streamboat. We got the finest crew upon the high seas. Oh, look at them. Oh, look at that. I'm your host, Justin. Let's get you to why you're most likely here. He is a legend. He's a beast. He's a god. And I wish I could be like him. Let's give it up to Jake Cook. Hello. What an intro. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Stream Live. Welcome to the Stream Boat Live. Thank you for coming out. People talk too much and put the boots on not enough. Acting so stuck up, you need to get the head out. Stand still on the escalator, and then they miss the train. If you don't want to go insane, you need to get the lead out. Come on. Those of you who didn't know, I was uh, going for the Guinness Book of World Records for most keyboard sweeps. <laughs> if you're wondering why I did that so many times, it's also because I'm a hell of a performer. Thank you guys for having me. I'm going to keep on going. I love you guys. Wake up, my young friend. Wipe the sleep out of your eyes. Gonna take you by surprise. Shit's not that simple. No, shit ain't all sweet. It's a slog to do most anything, and wisdom. Gotta get it off the street Cause this is where all the blood flows They can't see from the top Up there's where the compassion starts You're down here where it stops I rose up from the concrete Just my wits and teeth And I'll be damned if we're 
no state fair. No, it's just a sad state of affairs. Every single moment is a fight, and you got better luck with the lightning strike. Finding anyone who cares. So next time you need a shoulder or a pat on the back, don't look up my. I got bills and the rent is due So I'm in survival mode Ooh, yeah. <clears throat> Survival mode <laughs> Trying to catch the spirit Aren't we all <laughs> Alright, I was just warming up so now I can play this song, which is a, a new song. And I'm not going to say that I'm going to mess it up, but I'm definitely thinking it. <laughs> so if it happens, just know that I thought of it. Jamie Spears. That was beautiful. Arrest Jamie Spears today. <laughs> today. <laughs> Let's switch gears here. I'm not going to play Nog Trompa. We're going to switch gears here. reading a book about Columbine, the Columbine High School Massacre. Yes. Lord knows why. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tragedy, obviously. One of the biggest misconceptions about the uh, Columbine Massacre is that it was um, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold's reaction to like bullying or being outcast and alienated. But the reality is like they were the assholes themselves. 
themselves. They were the bullies. They thought they were superior to everybody. They, uh, they loved wielding the power whether or not somebody could live or die in their hands. And they relished the act. Real sick books. They thought they were God. Everybody looks in the one a piece. It's so hard being me. All the evil eyes and the jealousy. They want me to fail, be in misery. Cause their lives are filled with monotony and poverty. My burden to hold is my loveliness and my perfect soul. And so others are cold. Cause they hate themselves and the wretched roles. But I'm the king of kings. And every song I sing is a testament to the joy I bring And I will prevail over my enemies If they dare to doubt, even if they flee, they will be mine I used to be small, I would shrink myself for the big and tall Then I scaled the wall Meant to close me in Now I'll land them all I could never change Never be improved Cause I learned from pain Every scrape and bruise Only pissed me off Till I hit the back Now I'll never stop Till it all goes black Woo! Woo! Cause I'm a legend And I'm a beast And I'm a god And everyone Wishes that they could be me. I'll be remembered until the end of the world. And it's the greatest ever. That's my legacy. gift and a curse <laughs> being who I am you may think you want it but you don't it's a lot to be God are, are we do. in the presence of a God you're in the presence of God himself I love you God um, I would like to take this time to uh, not condone any specific <laughs> Once I was lost, I didn't know what to do. Climbed up the hill, looked in the eyes of the guru. Take me by the collar and shake me. I'm trying to get messed up. Up from the floor. Open the doors of reception All of my pain Was like a spell of protection I don't think you heard me the first time I said I'm trying to get most of Those tough and scary Those temporary Need to get high Point me to the guy with the mushrooms If life's gonna suck I'll fucking live in the vacuum Come get your guy He's got his eye on my later And I'm an enlightened man And I'm not gonna do nothing crazy I just think he needs to reconsider that shit Unless he's trying to get me messed up Mr. Sunshine Until you cross the line I don't want to think about it Please don't ever make me see my reflection No need to make us think about it I'm in love with my stunning progression I'm so very tightly wound Yet so loose with my grip I gave up on trying to find my objective 
I need, to, I need to work on that ending there. But no, everything else that, was, that was it. I think that was it. That was. <laughs> yeah. Hanging out. Hanging out. Got a few more here. There's another new one. I'm gonna. This is in the same keys, actually. I should play them farther apart. These two songs. <laughs> <laughs> they're, uh, they're different. You'll see. <clears throat> this one's worse. <laughs> this, this one's. This one's newer. <clears throat> That you even hunger Then you're struck by the open bridge Searching for a remedy No words, just a melody Tell me when did it get so deaf Hold me to the light and see If I'm real or counterfeit Am I just a fixed routine too late to get away from it Feeling like a half a guy Really not a piece of pie But I'm still gonna fight to live Because there ain't another way That I would rather spend my time And share the weather Cause in the summertime we spread apart But when the wind is cold we come together Cut me open if you think I'm a lie I cannot even deny if I try I might be far away from normal But with you the normal's always getting better Imagine me at six years old Way before I met you Square peg in a two round hole Till you came to the rescue, babe single digits on me Cause I haven't been around lately Cause without you I don't know what I do But I would rather spend my time and share the weather Cause in the summertime we spread apart but when the wind is cold we come together Just cut me open if you think I'm a lie I cannot even deny if I try Cut me open if you think I'm a lie. I cannot even deny. I cannot even deny. Cut me open if you think I'm a lie. I cannot even deny if I try. I might be far away from normal, but with you the normal's always getting better. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. a fucking blast dude i've had a blast for sure yeah this yeah. was awesome um this next yeah all right here we go what i want to say about this next one all right uh oh so apparently i've never been on live television before <laughs> but apparently it's great um you just get dizzy all you do is get dizzy <laughs> i wanted to say that I meant to say that earlier. Um, yeah, you know. Uh, death, what a trip. <clears throat> Down in the We've got everything that we could need And we've got each other But if you weren't here with me I would be struggling I would be shaking like a leaf in the wind Lord, I would be suffering All of the panic would be setting in Stacking up 
block in our exit route But things could be worse than being stuck in with you Though I do hope it takes a little turn for the better At least we get to watch it burn together we do When we're hunkered down in the bunker Just me and you Things could be worse than being stuck in with you Though sometimes dread can overtake me All I feel is safety When I'm with my baby So I do hope it takes a little turn for the better at least we get to watch it burn together we do when we're hunkered down in the bunker waiting for doom yes Woo! <laughs> yeah. man that's another favorite off that album God, much appreciated so um, can I get away with one more Absolutely. Of course. Of course. Yeah. You're gone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how long you've been doing the whole God thing, but you kind, of make, you kind of make the rules as you but go. But I'm like also amazed. I can't wait to get in more into more in depth than that in the interview about my uh, delusions of grandeur. <laughs> Eat look it too. Um. Like everything's fine. <clears throat> We're only here for a good time. Gonna kick it till my knees hurt. Get to drinking on some wine. I'm really looking for a shorty. The youngest the night. I woke up from my corpse. Reviver to scan the room for a vine. And what do you know? There she goes, dressed in white. Made a home of my mind. What are you looking for tonight? Do you think about this song? Got some really nice pants there. You get them all. Think I'd like to get to know you. Could you show me your ID? I'm in love with this photo. Looks so much like me. Is there something material between us, or am I out of my mind? Cause what do I know? Then she spoke. Stuff is spinning all around Looks like they just cut the lights on So much for that round If you keep getting me this drunk Then you might need to drive me home What do 
do I know? Corpse reviver to the dome. Another night all alone. Yeah. Yeah. I realized I skipped one. I could be. That you could got be, another? I could get. I could do. I mean, what do you got? What do you guys want me to do? Do it. Do okay. one more. We're not do afraid. It. Okay. Wait. You mean I get to choose? I mean, I didn't play the. You know. Super heavy one. The someday or something. There's that one. <laughs> There's something I forgot to do. duty to give it people for someone's gotta bleed so why should we pretend to we suffering and all your misery <laughs> power so divine and it feels so fine shame that you have no so your daughter's dead, we could give a fuck, you don't live near us. They were far too small, they couldn't fend us off, although they kicked and screamed. They were young and prime, what you gonna do, freedom isn't free, from up here. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh man. That was yeah. amazing. Yeah, thank you. It was awesome to witness God before our very eyes. Yeah. Um I feel great. So when do we go live? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was soundcheck. Yeah, it was uh, great sound check. Good sound check. Um uh, we got some questions from viewers in the chat, of course. We can also hop it. in from awesome. I love it. From uh Justin's deep dives is, that, is my camera right there yeah thank you for tuning in jake jake heads across the globe <laughs> thank you for being here thank you all for being here this is quite a this is we appreciate you for performing this has been honestly probably one of the fucking coolest like shows we have on here yeah 
Fuck uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're a Thank fucking you. performer, man. <laughs> yes. I do my best. Uh, I am who I am. It's me in the flesh. I don't really think <laughs> I'm God. <laughs> I, I want to start. I was wondering that. Yeah, know. Jason, what do they what do they got in the chat? Oh, okay. Well, I yeah, I didn't want, I didn't want to ask this one. Perfect. Scoobert. So, Scoobert uh, Rogers, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. Um, good to see you. <clears throat> the first question for you, Jake. Oh, great. <laughs> when did you realize you were God? <laughs> Let's just go right the fuck in. Damn, it's a deep question. It's not. Um, you know, I don't think I'm God. I think like uh, a lot of the um, the songs that I was writing during this period of time, working on Jerks, were about like ego. And stuff like that and uh yeah just exploring different kinds of jerks um but i'm a humble person i think it's it's the most important thing is to be humble and know that you can be wrong the most important thing is to know that you can be wrong and to apologize profusely (laughs) well you know apologize the appropriate amount and uh be willing to change we're all just we're all, all out here doing our best Oh. Yeah. Does that answer the question at all? Uh, <laughs> so when did I realize I was God? Probably when I was like 15. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go, Scoop. Uh, you can uh, chew on that one for the rest. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, okay, I guess. And there's a follow-up. And did God take music lessons, or can he just do whatever uh, he or they decides he wants to do? It's uh, Yeah, well, I took drum lessons. I did take drum lessons. Mm. Okay. Drums are my first instrument. Uh. Yeah, I took a little that bit of drum lessons. That, that explains why it was our first instrument. Yeah. <laughs> True. <Y'all's, laughs> you yeah. made the first beat. Like. You know, I, like, I mean, yeah, th- my first instrument really is like tabletops and pots and pans and stuff, I guess, technically. I learned how to when I was a baby. Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Rhythm, rhythm is really important to me and trying to play, like, in a rhythmic way. And, I don't know, I smack the shit out of the keyboard. Um. Yeah, drum lessons. Like, uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this. Uh, when I was taking drum lessons, like I would go in every week, and the drum teacher would teach me uh, a beat. But before the lesson, we'd have like five minutes of warm up. And uh, during my second lesson, I played this beat like during warm up, and he was like, "Well, that was the beat I was going to teach you today, actually." So, <laughs> nice. You know. Guess I don't need you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of argue that piano is a percussive oh. in- percussive instrument too. Yeah, so, it, well, it makes sense. piano is for sure, and this is too actually. There's yeah, some super like super rhythmic, and I had to fix this. I want you guys to know, I had to fix this this shit uh, yesterday. I've never fixed a keyboard before, but I fixed like the weights because I like mm. I've been playing guitar a lot. I've been playing keyboard, but I pulled it out to try to practice for this show on some dead keys. But I got in there, switched the hammers out. It's real easy. If you guys own a Roland XV88 <laughs> <laughs> and want to buy it. All from me because it sucks. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> hey, that doesn't make any sense. Why would they want to buy it? If it... Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, um, they're pretty easy to to fix, and there's a lot of YouTube videos on how to fix them. I forgot the question again. Me- it's gonna keep it, happening. Probably. It was it was a follow up on yeah. the musical like yeah. etymology of your upbringing, I think. But that's yeah, nice rolling. Thank but you. That's that's some that's a nice little gem. Oh, yeah, that's well, a very serious uh, keyboard. Did you guys know this? Um, this was funded for by um, by Jake Heads themselves. Did yeah? Nice. Did, you, did somebody contribute here? Mm. Oh, you did. Yeah. Oh, thank you. What's your Emily. name? Kamaya. Kamaya, I'm Jake. Man, nice thank you. you. Yeah, thank I played you so your much. album nonstop in front of her last year. Oh shit! <laughs> so. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah, like what hap- what happened was like uh, my keyboard got stolen out of my car in East Atlanta, and I had this hmm. um, funny idea. I didn't know what I was going to do to raise the money, but then I had this funny idea to do like a, a, a live stream on was... Instagram. But during the live stream, I just mimed uh, playing the keyboard <laughs> yeah. the whole time. I did. It was the longest set I'd ever done. <laughs> like I did all my songs. Was there music or there was, no, it was, there, was, I was like singing? singing and... Yeah, I had a microphone, but I had no keyboard. I was just like, you're just like oh, air oh, piano. Yeah. Because I, no, I, I would watch that. Miming the piano. Oh, it was That's actually it was pretty hard. genius. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually pretty hard. I I I thought it'd be like a it could be a possibly viral moment, or I just thought it was funny. Like I don't know, <laughs> just popped in my head. Like man, it'd be funny. Like. Like I wish I could play a, a live a live show a benefit show to get a yeah. keyboard. Like fuck, I don't have a keyboard. Like, I'll just do it. Yeah. Keyboard. <laughs> but gotta, it worked uh, anyway. So people donated, and I was able to buy this keyboard here. Yay! So like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. raised the money. And it was only like an hour long show. 
Um, I hope the IRS isn't watching because that didn't happen actually. It was a yeah because <laughs> none gotcha. of that is true. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> April <laughs> Fools. Yeah. I, I bought I bought for this with totally taxed money. You know, they're not they're <laughs> not they're not here. Don't worry, they're not waiting outside at all. Yeah. <laughs> we got a two part question from uh, Christian Fraser. Oh great! Excuse me. Um, what inspires you, and what definitely does not inspire you? Okay. Mm. I get this question all the time. <laughs> Specifically, the what does not inspire me. Oh, interesting. People ask me that a lot. Hmm. Um, because it's everything. It's life, you guys. Think about that. Okay. <laughs> okay? Fair, fair. No, uh, you know, like, for this project, it depends on what you're talking about. Like, in general, like, I'm a guy who's done a lot of different types of music and a lot of different kinds of projects. And for this thing, I guess... What inspires me is like intense music, noise music, uh, hmm. black metal, um, mm. like just stuff that's on the cutting edge of music or whatever. Trying to like, trying to like um, do something that's both very, very dissonant and very poppy at the same time. That was like the challenge of the album, like doing like a noisy pop album that has like a lot of beautiful moments, but a lot of like just like straight up noise and stuff and like. Weird samples and shit, and yeah, so I like, that was awesome. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I saw like it'd be cool to do like a music video in like New yeah. York Times Square, with yeah. like everyone just like kind of walking around you and like faraway shots of like you doing like one of your songs. That'd I don't be, know. I thought that'd be cool. Let's do it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> let's, let's do it. Let's fly out tonight. I'm down. <laughs> yeah, I got points. <laughs> go, to, go to Times Square. See Carson Daly. Do, you guys know who that is? Carson Daly, yeah. Carson Daly, yeah. Do you do you like Kiss? Um, I, I don't like Kiss but that much. No. Okay. Uh, my CP. That's fair. The face this paint is, is inspired fair. by like um like the, like so mayhem. You know, yeah, yeah. Mm. Mayhem. Uh, you know, weirdly like, th- it was just this this idea I had. It, it was like a a photo shoot that I wanted to do. Um, I wasn't planning on doing it for the whole character or whatever. I just thought it'd be funny because like I was doing the Jake Cook stuff and I wanted to do a photo shoot where I like had corpse paint on and in uh, like a jacket, like a business suit or whatever to try to portray like a jerk because like the black metal guys are like famously jerks, murderous <laughs> assholes. <laughs> you don't know the story behind like uh, early black metal bands, mm, specifically. Ma- metal, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, yes. and they were like also uh, – elitist pricks like they didn't just kill each other they were like very it's it's a lot of the shit they were into is the kind of shit that i wanted to explore just like this whole idea of a certain kind of purity that they held people to as far as like they hated everything that wasn't metal and they yeah. were just fucking snobs about everything and fucking <laughs> hung out in dungeons all the time and <laughs> ate, out of, ate cereal out of skulls and shit the, yeah <laughs> mental health right <laughs> right bragged to each other about you know it was like the cool the cool thing to do would be to to kill somebody and or whatever. So a couple a couple kids did that in the scene. It wasn't like widespread or whatever, but just attracted a weird group of people that are very into like intense raw shit. Cosplaying as fucking Siegfried and shit. It's like, dude, come on yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the music's terrible too. <laughs> yeah. Most of it really sucks. I don't know. It's it's you know, it's whatever. It's not like my favorite. I you know, I like metal though. Um Said, um, is it Machine Gun Kelly? That guy's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that shit heavy stuff, boy. MGK. Be- yeah. Best uh, MGK. He's black he's metal like, artist you, of our generation. Yeah, he's like grunge, though, right? Is he grunge or is he heavy metal? We- <laughs> <laughs> I love him. We got a question from uh, Kamaya, actually. So this one is interesting. So do you have a musical slash theater background? Um, if not, have you thought about like writing one? Hell yeah! You well, you know, I, I I like musicals a lot. I'd say like a big, a big. The question of like my inspirations, there's like so many answers for that. But a big inspiration to me early on, as far as like what I wanted to do, something that made me realize I wanted to be a performer, was the Rocky Horror Picture Show movie. Oh. That oh, shit, yeah. like just wow. seeing Tim Curry, like Tim I was just like something yeah. switched on where I was like, damn! So I was just so thought it was so fucking cool, <laughs> you know? Um, respect, like uh, respect. And just the commitment to the character and, like, the the 100%, like, you know. I re- really respected the shit out of that. And uh, 
Like, um, I like I saw Rent for the first time recently. I thought that was pretty good. You know, it's like you know, it's a cliche a at this point, or you know, it's a classic. <laughs> but it's like I think they hit all the right spots, though. It do, yeah. I mean, it's some great music. Uh, I thought we were gonna start a. <laughs> you know, I listen to Rent some Rent some, some Rent songs. Five Sometimes get pumped up. No, nobody. No, <laughs> I relate to <laughs> La Vie Bohème. I, did have a, I had another question for you. What is under the mask? Ooh, wow. Okay, it's not a mask. God, it, it's like. Uh, are you asking? Is the is the broader question like why do or what what what's the the buffer between what I'm wearing on my face and my actual self? I guess is that too. Am I too high? <laughs> my ultimate question is if there is a mask under the mask. <laughs> I guess that's oh, ultimately wow. where I was going at. That's, but. You know, I, this this. Uh, but some heroes have to wear a mask, so I'm just I'm not sure. If... Putting mm. putting the corpse paint on allows me to inhabit a like uh, a character or like do or it gives me an amount of confidence. It makes me feel like self affirmed in the yeah. way like. Anything would make you feel self-affirmed. Your fashion choices, or wearing any kind of makeup, or whatever. I to- it's like clothing, I sh- jewelry. I totally agree. Everything mm-hmm. has like an energy. Yeah, as corny yeah. as that shit sounds, you yeah. all recognize it. Oh, energy. And I wanted to yeah. energy vibes, man. Yeah. You know it. So the yeah, but the that's thi- that's sick. That's awesome. The thing about the corpse paint is like I, I wanted. I, I did it for a photo shoot, but then I had the idea like it'd be kind of weird and cool if I just started wearing it out in public sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So Fuck I did that yeah. for a little while, just to kind of like. I was trying to think of, of marketing ideas, basically, and just like something that, you know, like really popped out. Yeah, I'm just sick of feeling like a fucking like content creator or whatever. I just want to like yeah. be weird and be a fucking artist. Yeah, I mean, you know? it made me feel punk dude, rock. Cool. Hell yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that makes me feel punk rock to like wear wear corpus paint. You know, I don't do it all the time now, um, because because it's like I don't necessarily seek attention all the time, but it's cool to kind of bring myself, kind of center myself in that way. Um, and putting it on, like, to do this, I thought it was just kind of funny because I'm going by Jake Cook for the first time, but I'm wearing a wearing makeup for the first time. My character for the first time, actually. Yeah. Um, I like it. Yeah. It's awesome. No, I, like it. I think it's a dope look. For the first, because yeah. it was always something else. Yeah, yeah. That's um, cool. Well, bro, how I found you was, um, I was, like, looking at, I was, like, just uh, checking out some bands on uh, Immersive Atlanta, and I saw your article, and you, like, stood out above everybody really and i was like what, who the fuck is this guy what was he doing <laughs> i gotta like literally like check this music out so yeah then i was not expecting what i heard you know right i think that's the problem <laughs> i kind of fucked myself over in that way i know like, <laughs> i think it's awesome it drew me in even more yeah it attracts a certain kind of people who are going to be like but some people like somebody told me that they tried to recommend my music to somebody and they saw my album cover and they're like, I'm not gonna listen to this fucking juggalo music. Or like, yeah. Yeah. Like a, well, that's what I thought at first. I was like, is this dude into ICP? Why are they promoting? I just this like, shit? I like, I like disparate sounding shit. I like the idea of like, uh, wearing the corpse paint and shit, and uh, making pop music actually, or like nice yeah. sounding music. And it's, that's it's, awesome. it's, I think it's fucking well, genius. Because even like the awesome. pop, if you listen to the lyrics, it really makes sense. You know? Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. there's, it's all, it's all like, it's all part of the big, big vision that took a long time to to come together of like just fucking around and trying it out on stage and trying out different things. And, you know, seems uh, very like well-crafted, man. Thank you, dude. Yeah. yeah I it's, think it's, it's a really gonna, cool it's, concept. It's going to get more and more crafted. Now that I have the, the band, the band is fucking awesome. Uh, the yeah. self immolation band. Yeah. The self immolation <laughs> band. Yeah. That's like, um, a name I've had for a long time. Very powerful. These are guys who know how to, uh, make a public statement. Yeah. So, yeah. Self immolation. Yeah. yeah, free Palestine. Yeah, yeah. Hey, say that free Palestine. Uh, yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, that band's awesome. It's just it's a different like when I first started with the band, um, I was uh I chose to take the to not have the corpse paint, like and wear like beige for a couple shows for like the first three or four shows, because I wanted to kind of like. I didn't want to be separate from the band. I was trying to figure out like how that was going to work, you know, because I'd done the whole album by myself, and I'm just like, how how are these people going to help me carry out this this vision? In a way, you know, and I want to respect what they like in a way that's like I'm not. I didn't want it to be like my band, and like even though, you know, it's, it's it is Jake Cook, or, yeah. <laughs> but it's like I wanted, you know, the, the stuff that they play is not like what's on the album. It's like a yeah. different thing, you know. 
Um, Dude, it might. But it's still evolving, you know, that whole thing. Yeah. I mean, it might be funny to see, like, a lot of guys, like, really nice dressed into suits and then you, yeah. like, <laughs> well, you know, how, how the contrast been? of it. It's like, at first, I wasn't wearing makeup, and then and then now the makeup has become, I mean, it's just the makeup in, like, a suit jacket, um, <laughs> and they just wear whatever. I think it's kind of <laughs> interesting for them to wear whatever. Yeah. I don't want yeah. To be them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. I want them to be them, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Cool. They're cool guys, and, like, you know. So we're about to be on hiatus, basically. Also, oh no, that's a whole other thing. We're, we need a drummer. Um, you need a bass what, player. <laughs> what's the bass player? We have we have a bass player. Damn. But uh, we're gonna be looking for a drummer. Uh, but we have a bass player named James. James is awesome. Shout out James. Uh, shout shout out, James. out James. Check out uh, New Weirdos. Uh, oh, I actually, rules. literally just uh, I think he followed us and I checked out some of his stuff. It sounds awesome. Dude. We're trying to get him on here. Yeah, man. New Weirdos is fucking rules. And their their yeah. new stuff, like he sent me their uh, some mixes of their new album. And it's just like it sounds so sweet. He's like such a good songwriter, and really like I respect the shit out of what he does. And it's a similar kind of thing, I think. You know, kind of funky, uh, poppy kind of stuff. You know, heck yeah. Um, but that shit rules. And then um, got my boy Nellward on guitar. Who, Shout his out name Nellward. is Nick, but he has a project called Nellward. He's about okay. to go on tour, so get your Nellward tickets right now. Go to nellward.com. What do you um, <laughs> Nellward? Nellward, yeah. And okay. His name is and his he, name is Nick Nick Elward. Nick Elward, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh that's but that's some also <laughs> no. Yeah, it is it's Nellward. yeah. Works. <laughs> Dude, so uh jerks. Yeah. Um it kind of tells like the story of like a like the journey of like a narcissist kind of finding enlightenment. Um yeah. How much would you say of the album is like the character versus like your personal experience? I think they're like the same or yeah. a, a lot of it, you know, is like I've kind of always used my music. I've always I've always been really interested in trying to inhabit a character or trying to inhabit a uh, frame of mind through which I can kind of express my inner thoughts that I might not necessarily be, you know, stuff that it's it's easier to express your inner thoughts through something else or kind of like taking that leap of inhabiting a thing like that so i mean it's all like in the way i write songs you know i may be writing about a certain thing um but it's it's all going to be affected by what i'm watching or what i'm doing or like i don't know i just kind of it's it's always like a stream of consciousness thing mm, yeah um but i'll say this like the album itself, it went through a lot of changes. And um, at one point, it had a lot more of a clear narrative. Um, not character names, but there was a lot of, like, because I, I really love, I wanted to make it like a real concept album, like Pink Floyd's The Wall. It was like okay. a big, big fucking inspiration for me. Awesome. As a kid. And so I wanted to use stuff like um, referencing different colors and like symbolism and shit like that, you know. Had this whole thing, because like, um, we, our dog, White Dog, died that was another thing it was like so i was making this album that was about like jerks about arrogant assholes and then our dog died and made us really really sad it was like the fucking saddest it was the worst you know and uh like then it made me realize like that was the the thing i needed i had like you know the narcissist and the enlightened guy but i didn't have the middle thing mm, until white dog turning died. point oh yeah, yeah. When White Dog died, that sparked the thing in my head that's like, that's going to be the, the catharsis for the change is grief. Because grief is ultimately bigger than anything, bigger than any depression or anything. Better than any, like, performative depression, which is another thing about the corpse paint, you know? This is me, like, saying, like, you can see on my face that I'm fucked up and depressed or whatever. It's me, like, putting depression on my face, you know? Yeah, yeah. And the grief is actually bigger than all that depression. If you've ever experienced a loss, you know how fucked up it is. It's like, it's worse than being depressed because it's yeah. like, there's no, it's just like a, a monolith, you know? The shit like sucks, you know? <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's what's kind of like a big, That's... a big, a big like inspiration of the, of the project is like dealing with grief and processing death and shit like that. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's, that like provided the middle piece that I needed. And then just kind of like filling that in. Anyway, all that to say, like, I had some other songs that were, like, a lot more explicitly. I had this whole thing about White Dog and Black Dog mm. because 
white dog was white dog, but black dog, there's this like famous quote by Winston Churchill where he talks about depression, calls it the black dog, calls it the black dog. Yeah, the black dog of depression is what he said. So it's like black black dog is, is depression and the white dog is like uh, white dog, our dog, because that was his name, white dog. <laughs> Um, was it a white dog? Yeah, he was a white dog. Yeah, it was not. It was an inherited name given to him by some people who didn't care as much about him or whatever, but just kind of stuck. Uh, He's like, oh, that's because there was another colored dog, and there's like, oh, that's white white dog or whatever. Anyway, he was a great dog. R.I.P. to him, and I wouldn't have this album without him. That's not true, but it would it wouldn't be as good. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't wow. have had the turning point. So that's like at the end of someday. That Pretty, yeah. noise at the end of it. That's kind of like that. Because it turns uh, the album like up until that point kind of is very bleak, very uh, yeah. You're finding, I mean, you do find a lot of like love in the darkness and despair, or you're searching for it at least. And yeah. then at the end of like someday, just like ends, literally yeah. it crashes and burns, as right? The right. Song suggests, and That's just like awesome. this horrible noise at the end of it, mm-hmm. and then really literally the next song is like finding like enlightenment yeah. whether you found it through shrooms or not i don't know right, like, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's like the the ru- the rough storyline is like it's a guy who's very depressed and then tries to seek out like a, a guru type figure or something and like does research and finds himself in the kind of toxic sphere of that as far as like people that are just saying like that you shouldn't cry and like you got to be tough to get through life and like i don't know I was thinking about when I wrote Heart Rate, the first song. That was the first song for like a long, the longest time, for the like four, whole four years. Heart Rate was the first song, and I wrote that when I found out who Andrew Tate was, <laughs> because Oof. I like. <laughs> well, I didn't even find out who he was. I just saw a, a video of him on Reddit, and he was talking about how books are stupid. <laughs> he was People like, talk uh, too much. <laughs> yeah, and you were like, uh. well, he was like, uh, he was like, um, you got to be like a really low intellectual person to like sit there and be like I'm gonna read a book like my brain is like way faster than that I need like a sports car and like a supermodel babe and like I need like uh, a, I need I a, need a this is a quote jackhammer like, man nerds yeah. with your books whole, <laughs> it's and I was like this guy's such a fucking I, did, I had no idea that he like had some kind of influence or whatever on yeah, middle no, school unfortunately, kids unfortunately yeah. yeah he's like the he's like the king middle school kid yeah, yeah. No, maybe he's, he's, he's the now. king of the incels. He's like, I'm the doubt. coolest he's kid in the seventh like, grade. Yeah, yeah. shit. <laughs> literally rallied every <laughs> incel on every edge of the planet and decided to have them join his Discord and pay. You know what's crazy, though, yeah, is he actually has the right position on Palestine, and that's the only thing I will give. We're not even. <laughs> I don't even. That's, <laughs> hey, even a broken clock is. Yeah, even yeah, a broken yeah, clock is right like, like once Palestine. or twice a day, so. Yeah. So, uh, Kamaya actually had on the first song you mentioned. So we're talking about that. Yeah. Uh, was wondering like, was it a was the song really about Britney Spears' conservatorship, or did that did yeah. the words just so happen to fall in line with that celebrity trope? That was about Britney Spears' conservatorship. Wow. Nice yeah. call. I wrote that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like uh, that was just an idea I had for a long time about Britney Spears' really fucked up situation. Yeah. Obviously, it's yeah. like horrifying, and is everything that represented, you know. I was just kind of thinking about like how everybody like I'm 34 years old. I feel like a lot of people of my generation or age group kind of like um, seem to rally around this idea of like how fucked up it was that this was happening. And so Mm -hmm. Britney Spears kind of represents a metaphor or it's like she kind of represents her getting free represents the liberation of of all millennials in a way. Mm. You think Mm. really deeply and Mm. smoke as much weed as I do. (laughs) (laughs) You know? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah, like, uh, I just wanted to write a song about that. Um, yeah, it turned out, I, I like that one. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to keep working on it, but it's called Living Room. You know, and that's the thing, like, yeah. you know, she's like, that's something else I was thinking about. Because she, like, put out all those videos mm-hmm. where yeah, she's, like, uh, dancing in her living room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was just like, oh, shit, this is, like, the first time that she's been able to like put out her own product. Ooh, her, fuck. Like, do you her own I mean? Yeah, that's thing. crazy. Like, everything she's... Everything she's ever done, insane. Everything she's ever done has been at the whim of like the record industry or whatever. And she's her, like treated yeah. like a fucking zoo animal. They, you know, it's fucking yeah. disgusting. This is the first yeah. thing she's ever done like by herself. It's like because now you can do that. Before, when she was coming up, you couldn't do that. There yeah. wasn't Instagram and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Now everybody can can. They don't need a manager or whatever. You can learn how to cut onions and so make is, a viral yeah. video. <laughs> so this is the first. This is the first thing that she ever made by herself, and people are like, "She's fucking crazy." It's like, "Fuck you." Dude. You know what she fucking went through? They like fucking drugged her and like, <laughs> yeah, 
All the shit they she did. couldn't they do anything. anything. They're like, yeah, she, I would have handled yeah. it better. She like, was treated sure, okay. like cattle. Got <laughs> yeah. none of the money. Yeah, exactly. She couldn't like yeah. have sex. Couldn't like do anything that a normal person would do in her age. She was. She, she would. She wants. I hate to life. say it. She was effectively an entertainment slave. Like that shit yeah. was. Uh, crazy. Yeah. yeah. Modern slavery and entertainment it was conservatorship. The, dude, yeah. the music industry of the '90s was so. It was fucked. profoundly fucked. Yeah. Up. Like, there's so many stories like that. Just and all like, the way through, really. <laughs> like the Insync and all those people, they just didn't get paid at all. And like, yeah. Yeah, dude. That is the fuck, nuts. Their fucking manager went like died in jail. <laughs> like TLC didn't get paid. Like, and yep. they were like the biggest, biggest girl, you know. Female, uh, uh, like singing group ever, and they like went bankrupt and shit. Mm-hmm. That's insane. They just like it's fucked so, people over so, so hard, and then they had yeah. the nerve to sue a bunch of twelve year old kids because of Napster and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Nineteen ninety seven, ninety eight yeah. or whatever. Like somehow, I mean, <laughs> yeah, get, God. Yeah. weird times. You, you can't get you can't get paid by making good like a good product. Got to go after like the twelve year old kids. <laughs> yeah. Now they're banned. Well, they're the most vulnerable. <laughs> if there's Shit. anybody, I want to put out, put it out there. If there's any 12 year old kids listening to my music on Napster today. I'm not gonna go after you. Any, <laughs> I was like, legally, thank you legally, for finding it. Way. Yeah, like, hell yeah, <laughs> seed that shit, seed it. Like, I yeah. want to know how you found it, and I want you to yeah. share that to all of your friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> share it with your friends. One of you, mo- one of you little shits have a really big blog or blog. Just share it with your friends. Yeah. Yeah. Put yeah. Me Independent on. media. So going back to yeah. the first song, heart rate on the album, it ends with uh, like a sample from the Jonestown death tape with Jim Jones. <laughs> um, yeah. And it really sets up like the theme and lets you kind of know what is to come is it's going to taste as good as the Kool-Aid, but it's going to like kill you with its intent, you know? <laughs> so, um, that's true. How did it cross your mind? That- okay. That, I struggle. <laughs> I struggle with that because it is, I struggled with it because it's perhaps pretty problematic. I mean, you know, it, yeah. a bunch of people died. <laughs> it's like it really happened, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I, I, just learning about Jonestown is like the most, the most intense shit I've ever heard in my life. You know, yeah. The way, the way, you know, the the brainwashing process and mm. how he like preyed on underprivileged people and stuff and like, oh god, yeah. created this society. You know, so using using the Jonestown. Uh, sample it's like you know it may be fucked up it is pretty fucked up I guess but I wanted to set the tone or like I was kind of making the artistic point that the the song that what I'm talking about the gym culture and stuff like that the uh, Andrew Tate and all that stuff and the being super hard and um, you know never like expressing yourself or being sensitive all that stuff is a death cult so I was kind of trying to make that point. Yeah. I was saying yeah. like, it, it is like Jonestown. So I mean, I think it was a good point made. Yeah. Like it is, it is fucked up. There are things that bad that happened, but if we can't look at them, you're, yeah, you're not trying to traumatize somebody or trigger someone. But we need to learn from these things because these are yeah textbook manipulators. Absolutely, taking advantage of people that are in, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. and it can't be repeated. You know, that kind of shit. But like. Uh, yeah, as far as like using different clips and stuff like that, I've always just felt like I'm kind of a I'm I'm kind of a product of all the media I've consumed. All the inspirations I have are like go into it all. They all go into the pot. Mm-hmm. So it's like I've kind of felt licensed to use samples and stuff like that to express how I feel, like recontextualizing samples to make a point. Do you have um, like a memory bank <laughs> you're just like pulling from, or are you just of like samples? Yeah, like I mean, how are you just because one of my, I mean, uh, one of my favorite songs on the album is literally, it's like the in- organ interlude. And you're oh, like yeah. sampling like an argument you've had with, I don't know, a relative, like your mom like or grandma. grandma. I don't know, your grandma. Yeah. And then you're taking like Dewey from Malcolm in the Middle. And then yeah. there's like a couple different like documentaries spliced in there. Like, yeah. where, how do you, how are you like, yeah, that's going to be the line that goes here. When is, those, in those cases, like, so I had that. That thing, that song kind of came together organically, and it was like really inspired by this interlude on the Ice Cube album the Predator, which is like song two or something Hell like that. Yeah. It's just like it's a sample of, it's like it's just a beat, um, 
and it's like a sample of people talking about him on the Oprah Winfrey show. Okay. So it'd be like, what is it? What is it that he's saying that you have a problem with and stuff like that? Mm. And um, it's like a DJ, or whatever, playing samples from that. I just thought it'd be cool to have like a thing in the middle of the album that was like, uh, like that. You know, that was a Ice Cube. Like was a big that that specific thing in the Ice Cube album was an inspiration for that. And that's uh, a classic. The piano was actually played by my fiance Olive's uh, dad. Oh, okay. And I, yeah. So I, I sampled it, like a short sample of it, and looped it. Um, and the the samples that I used, as far as like the ones that I chose, the the one with me arguing with my grandma, that was an, from an old tape of when I was recording a demo of a song when I was like 17 years old. And I was living in my grandma's house because my mom had kicked me out of the house because I got kicked out of school for writing a zine like this fucked up i mean not intentionally fucked up but this very like edgy edge lord zine of my teenage prose and poetry mm-hmm. it was very intense that i made a bunch of copies of and i passed out around the school and somebody's mom got a hold of it and eventually i mean i got i got uh, expelled but wow. somebody called my mom and read her a portion of it and she kicked me out of the house and so then i was living in my at my grandma's house with my dad who had like lost his job and my brother, who was about to join the military, but anyway, I was having an argument with my grandma because she, we were like really broke. My dad, and we were like, my dad lost his job, and she was trying to, uh, she wanted to take out an ad for the organ that was in like my room, the the bedroom uh, that I slept in, and I was trying to convince her to not sell it, but also bigger than that, I was like, kind of like, she's not gonna fucking take out. She had Alzheimer's. And like, I didn't, in my teenage mind, I'm just like, this is just a way, like she's not gonna, she's not gonna call. And we also don't have any money to do a listing like that. I don't know. I was mm-hmm. being a total asshole to her, being very dismissive. Being like, <laughs> grandma, it's my, <laughs> um, obviously it's my organ or whatever, you know? Right. So I had this tape of myself that like made me fucking cringe that I put it on, I put it on um, some old like release that I did like years ago when I was like in high school. Cause I've always like burned CDs and passed them out to people at different projects and shit. But I put it on one of those and I just had this thing for a long time. And like doing this jerks project, I wanted to like really reveal myself in a way that's like, this is the most, to me it was like re- very cringy. <laughs> like this, I, you know, I, I give myself, you know, I'm nice to myself for it. I mean, I was 17 years old. I was under a lot of pressure and whatever, you know, but like, uh, I just sound like an asshole and being mean to my, my grandma. Um, and there, and, and like, so I wanted to put that on the album and then I mixed it. And then the Dewey clip was something that I just had seen on Malcolm in the middle. One of the greatest shows ever, Hell yeah. um, of all time, definitely top five greatest shows ever, maybe top three, but like, uh, you know, it's just a note that I took on my phone at some point that I want to use that sample for something. I had a, like a, a, um, thing of uh, like a note a bunch of notes of like different samples i'd seen in oh, different okay. media so, so like, that's what that's how i remember to answer so you, your question that's a very long-winded <laughs> answer <Yeah. laughs> Basically, <laughs> no i love Grandma, it i love it <laughs> they're all my thoughts. so so notes app to answer yeah to you literally just short. watch something and just like <laughs> jot it down in if it out. if it hits me in that way like mm. the thing that yeah. the thing with dewey like when he's like the clip comes from an episode of malcolm in the middle when because Dewey has a very natural, he's the youngest uh, son, or until Jamie gets born. But he was, he is the youngest son until he's, anyway. He, like, has a natural ability for music. But Malcolm is the genius of the family. Mm-hmm. And so Malcolm kind of resents that uh, Dewey is, like, a musical genius. So they get into this big argument about it. And uh, that's when Dewey says what he says, which is, like, um, you know, Music's my only thing, and, like, you know, you're just mad because you don't get to have everything all the time. Like, music's my only thing. And, and he's like, and you know what? It's better than anything you have put combined, put, you know, put together. <laughs> anything you have combined together <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. Um, and, yeah, that hit me so fucking hard because it's always been true <laughs> <laughs> of me. Like, I don't know. Like, that's it's just, like, I just love music so much. I cry sometimes thinking about how much I love music. And how, like, I feel so happy that I get a chance to play it. Oh, yeah. Like, and, uh, 
and that I have like that I've developed uh, skills for it and stuff like that. And, like, um, yeah. So I just like some, that was something that hit me really hard. And the other thing is from um, there's a sample of a uh, dude from this documentary called The Decline of Western Civilization Part Two, which is about like the hair metal scene in L.A. Um, really awesome documentary by Penelope Spiris. But uh, it's this dude that's drunk as shit in a pool, pouring vodka into his mouth. Hell this yeah. like glam rock dude. Eighties. <laughs> He's okay now, I think. Um, but um, and then another clip of uh, from another documentary called uh, Dig, which is the best music documentary of all time, which is about the feud between the Dandy Warhols and the Brian Jonestown massacre. Oh, huh. super hilarious like movie that's just about like you know being in a band in general okay. and like being in a band that gets some some heat some little level of like label you know buzz or whatever because hmm. like the guys the guy in the the clip that i use he's talking about like dealing with a label and saying like you know who are you to like to tell me like how to write a song like i sneeze and hits come out <laughs> <laughs> so this guy this guy that had two hits i think in his whole career <laughs> 30 year career? Anyway. He only sneezed twice. Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> I guess he only sneezed twice. <laughs> yep. yeah. You're done. Got rid of his sinus infection. They're good songs, though. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, so, anyway, those are the, the clips from that. What else we got? Any more questions? I do, have a, great. I do have a few more yeah. um, before we get to my, my patented question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, will we ever hear the abandoned Death is Free album? Oh, great question. Referring to, um, damn, you did your research. I'm most appreciated. <laughs> yeah, so like uh, the project that I was doing before this was Seal Pup, and uh, I was working on an album called Death is Free when I decided to stop going by Seal Pup and start going by Jake Cook. And that's because uh, we got a keyboard um, hmm. from a Goodwill. So I started playing keyboard a lot instead of guitar, basically. It's kind of the initial thing, initial reason why I like kind of changed musical styles. Okay. Which has happened a few times in my life. Um, but uh, as far as like Death is Free, you know, that was going to be another concept album. And some of the songs from Death is Free, like Nag Champa was originally on Death is Free in kind of like a different form. And then I think there was another one too. I just kind of started writing different kinds of songs. Um, I got bored with Seal Pup, I guess. Okay. It, it, it's, um, you know, I'm glad that you brought this up because, actually, uh, Seal Pup is playing on April 12th at hey. uh, Ideal Sports Bar. Okay. They're doing a reunion show. Check them out. It's What happened was the, the guitar player for the Jake Cook band, he's going on tour. Nowhere's going on tour. Get tickets at NowhereTickets.com. <laughs> and uh, he, uh, so we're not going to have a guitar player. So I, I, I was like, instead of... Um, doing the Jake Cook set without a guitar player. I'm just going to play guitar, and then we'll do, like, a Seal Pup set. So it's, like, the first full band Seal Pup set um, on April 12th at Ideal Sports Bar. But uh, it's going to be fucking kick-ass. We've got uh, Ultra Lights and Lorenzo and Co. playing. Sick. Um, but I basically got bored with Seal Pup. I got, I got in my head just trying different weird stuff. I got bored with the format. Um and I was kind of like, I made this EP that I wasn't that into during uh, lockdown. Like the last Seal Pup EP, it's called Party. Um, and I made it kind of quick because I made it during lockdown and I didn't think we we're going to be locked down so long. <laughs> so I was like, I got to finish it before they let us back out, you know? I didn't know it was going to be super long. So I kind of finished it like hastily. And uh, I think I could have spent some more time on it, but... Some good ideas there, but I started to write sadder kind of shit and like just more mm. expansive shit, and so I just decided to keep going with that. Um, yeah, you know, but no, you will never hear those songs. <laughs> <laughs> never. How did you figure out that um, speeding up jerks would make a sick alternative version of it? Well, I mean, it's just like on TikTok all the time. It's like uh. Mm. I love I love TikTok, you like, know. I mean, I don't love it, but you know what I mean. Like, I look at it, I hate it, I hate myself. <laughs> but like, uh, <laughs> it's uh, I don't know. Well, I'll say this: like, um, when I was a kid, I used to do that because on Windows uh, computers, on sound recorder, 
you could like put a file in there and then there's like on the drop down menu there's like play at two times speed some of the earliest shit i ever made was doing like little soundscapes and stuff like that using windows sound recorder hmm. and putting oh, stuff yeah. together after adding effects and shit um do like weird like clips and shit actually you know it's my the first music i ever made was when i was like or the first stuff I recorded by myself was when I was like 13 or 14 and did this shit called Monkey Death Machine. <laughs> <laughs> which was like very inspired by this group, Negative Land, who makes these like uh, soundscapes, what they call plunder phonics. They're very like fair, pro fair use, uh, anti copyright law. And they do the same thing that I'm talking about kind of recontextualize clips to make a, a point, you know? So I was trying to do shit like that when I was like really little because I kind of discovered that band through Napster, probably actually. Huh. I just found this shit. Um, and uh, anyway, there's a thing on there where you could play the songs twice the speed. So I used to like drop songs into Sound Recorder and double the speed. Just I don't know why it sounds great. It just sounds really good. It's and the fact it. that it became a trend, I was like, fuck yeah. Is it always, I don't know. It, it just sounds, I don't know. But it, always, it, always, it sounds cool. I mean, dude, you know? I listened to that version several times as well. It's like a really Thanks. cool, different version. Yeah, a lot of people said that to me too like how they like that even better than the original sometimes and yeah. it's like i think you can hear you can hear all the uh different parts like um clearer actually cuz it's like happening faster so it's like i don't know it makes it's a good way to check your mix also if you're like if you're doing music like speeding it up um if it's if it sounds good sped up you know you have a good mix you know do you use like audacity audacity i don't like use right then? i don't use audacity I use um, Logic Pro. Yeah, and that meant like when you were like thirteen, I guess, because that's oh, when that yeah. was relevant. I don't think anyone's using Audacity like that well, now. <laughs> so I'm trying to think of like the first shit I ever used. There was Logic Pro, or not not Logic. Logic Pro, Pro was in like '91, so or Logic yeah. or Pro Tools, sorry, Garage, not Pro Tools. I but I didn't use that until like way band? later. Yeah, it was um Reason? before that. So there was actually <laughs> Reason's pretty old. Yeah. Dude, there was a software made by. Uh, it was like a video game called MTV Music Generator. That was um, it was a thing that was like basically like when I first saw GarageBand, I was like, this is exactly like MTV Music Generator. And it was this really primitive. Like I got the um, the the software. I got the disc from like an Office Depot. Hmm. Got my dad to buy it for me when I was like, I don't know, ten or something. And like, uh, but you know, it's like a bunch of like loops that you can drag and like make a song. You know. But there's also a way to put in your own, to like program your own shit. And so I was doing that and making songs with that. Um, that was like the first thing I I used. Maybe similar to like Fruity Loops or something like that. Yeah. Um, and then uh, then I was using like a four track tape recorder. Like I, did, I did like, I recorded all kinds of different ways. Um, but for, you know, I didn't, I never used Audacity actually. Um, I understand that's a pretty powerful. Now I use Adobe Audition for work, hmm. um, but like uh, it used to be called Cool Edit Pro. I used it back in the day. Um, yeah, I'm a I'm a total gearhead. Ask me any ask me gear related questions about gear. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Richard Richard Gear in the house. <laughs> We could we could yeah. do like uh, yeah. uh, your your patented question or gear question. We're hitting uh Yeah, I got my patented question that I have to ask everyone. I'm can't wait. Clearly a foodie, you know. Um, so where's the place I gotta eat and what do I gotta get there? You know, I you know I've thought about this a lot. I knew this question was coming at some point in my life, <laughs> <laughs> being that uh, you know my. My le- my level of uh, musical prowess is undeniable, and I'm destined for every great thing imaginable. Every <laughs> great thing afforded to the greatest musicians of all time shall be mine. Uh, what was the question? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. So okay, yeah. So anyway, places to eat. I don't know where do you, where do you what kind of what kind of food are you into? All of it. I'm not okay. a, a very spicy guy. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, are you Can't a vegetarian? Do you have any dietary restrictions? No, no. Yeah. Um. All right. There's a place called. There's a place in Atlanta called La Samilla, La which Samilla. is a, which is a new a newer place. It's like this vegan restaurant that's like has some of the best 
shit ever. It's like a Mexican vegan restaurant. Awesome. You do like okay. a crunch wrap that's all vegan. Um, I think these, these jackfruit or something. I don't know, but it tastes amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, like, yep, chili cheesesteaks with jackfruit. Kind of yeah, stuff. I don't eat meat that much generally. Like, uh, mostly a pescatarian. Um, I don't know. What about you? You like sushi? Oh, yeah, I'll do some sushi. Okay, cool. Where's the spot? You know, I was going to say Rusan. I guess I'll say Rusan's. Yeah. I'm not going to shade. Uh, or, you know, I'm not going to. Rusan's is the, the tri- tri- yeah. yeah, That is true. OG. I think yeah, it's. I'm not going for, like, closer. high tier, but you know it's going to hit. We know what we're here for. Yeah. I have some issues with, with, like, the changes that have happened there recently, I feel like. Yes. Bro. Bro, I grew were... up eating everything. Has it, yeah. 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 Has yeah, it been. I having problems with those changes, <clears> like, 2015. Has it been yeah. a little different? I haven't been in a while. I, well, either, I don't, it's, like, it's like uh, the, the, menu, the menus are different, and um, the employees seem like kind of pissed off. <laughs> they really don't to want me, to be there. <laughs> which to me is a sign of like a shitty manager, or like a manager that just comes, sure. in, and, mm-hmm. comes in and yells at everybody and then leaves. Mm-hmm. Everybody's kind of like scared and also like, fuck this place. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, it's like, no offense to Rusans Rish- Rish- or whatever. Uh, the sushi is totally okay. Yeah. Well, dude, we really appreciate having you. Oh, I can't believe it's over. uh, I had a great time. Fuck, bro, we had a great time too. Yeah, we always got to give it up to you know the crew here. Oh yeah, with Glenn Son making us sound good over there. Of course, Jason Joe Star keeping us on track in the chat. Jake Kapansky always looking beautiful, making sure we do too. <laughs> Charlie on the camera today. Yeah, Charlie. Shout out, Charlie. Uh, yeah. We're trying to keep it real quiet for Ryan, who has a headache. Uh, we were hoping he feels a lot better after this. He is better. How's your headache, Ryan? <laughs> and Kyle always switching it up between the cameras, making us look good. That's Producing right. it live yeah, Kyle, for us. Thanks, Kyle. We got Kamaya in the house. Yo, yeah, shout out Kamaya. Christian in the house. <laughs> shout out Christian. <laughs> yeah. Thanks Dude. for having me. Thanks for letting me ramble and stuff, you know. Bro, I, I Bro. love it, man. Appreciate I love it, yeah. It. Like, I, I feel like I got to know you a little bit, man. Me too, it's man. Cool. You know, I have a lot of stuff to say about this stuff, but it's like I haven't got a chance to talk about it. So this is great. Thank you for your questions. Dude. Hell yeah, you man. Know. Let's do it again, man. Check out Jerks. Go stream Jerks on Thank streaming you. right now. Didn't you nail Heck it? Heck yeah. Anywhere, anywhere you want. Let them know. You stream yeah. Jerks. Um, link. Okay. Linktr.ee slash Jake Cook Audio is where... You can find all my stuff. Maybe it's easier for us. I don't know. Oh, link tree. Link tree. J- link tree. Yeah. Okay. Link, <laughs> however you however you say that. Oh, link tree. Link, ter the e. <laughs> or you go, uh, Instagram is Jake Cook Audio and um, go stream jerks all over the place and. Um, Heck yeah. Uh, April twelfth, Ideal Sports Bar. Be there. Be squared. Fuck yeah! Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, Jake Cook. Thank you. Fucking killed it, man. Thank you guys. You want to yeah. jam it out? Yeah. Jam yeah. It, jam, play, it, play us out. Play okay, us yeah. out. Play us out, Kyle. Uh, All right. Uh, you know? It's so tough to say goodbye Thank sometimes. <laughs>
always gonna place Oh my mama put that on my name Now we is not the same Come together, yeah. life's dancing there in charge. Down the open the air is choking me. And when it's flowing out of space, none of this matters anyway. Oh, oh.